Do you want to know about all these utilities really quick? I know you do because you're watching this video and you clicked it. You've probably already got them installed on your PC, so it'll be very useful to you to learn them all. Learn them all by watching this video. You won't learn everything. Right, all these tools are command line applications in case you couldn't fathom that already, but I'm in my examples directory here. Uh, and I'm going to open up this readme file and I'll use it as an example. There you go. You might have seen these scripts if you've watched my videos before, but first is grep. You search for text inside a file. So you do the syntaxes grep, the command, what you want to search for, and then the file you're searching in. Grep, I want to look for pip, pip, and then the file, readme. And it says, wow, look, there it is. I can ask for the line number with dash n. Wow, it's on line 14. I want to search for pip, but then I also want five lines above and below it. I can use dash C, give it some context of five lines. Wow, ah, now we know requirements as this. Very cool. This example, I'll just show you how to find and replace using sed. Let's change pip to pop. So sed, s for substitute, pip with pop, and then the file name. Pop, wow. That hasn't actually changed the file though. Cat readme, it's still pip. So if I want to do that, I can do sed, add the dash i argument to change it, change the actual file. Notice there's no output printed, but if I cat readme, it's now pop install, but I don't want that. So I'll change it back. Sed, I want to change pop to pip. There we go. That's basically stuff of sed. You can also use it to delete things, replace every instance of a file on the line. You can use sed for a lot of things. We're going to talk about orc. It's a fully fledged basic text processing programming language. You can do almost anything with it, but everyone just uses it for column printing. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So I can do orc and then to print, you, you print a column and they're separated by spaces. So this would be two, right? So print orc and then you write, you have to do this thing because it's a fully fledged programming, programming language. I might do a more advanced video on orc later. Orc print dollar two, read. Right. Dumping is my, okay, so you see what that's done there. It's taken the second one. Cut, cut sections from a file. It's a bit like orc, but it does more than just spaces. Let's, let's first do a grep for all the headings in our readme, right? We've got our headings and then I want to cut them. Cut dash D for delimiter. Uh, I want to separate it by space. And then I want field two. Hello, where was I? Cut. Yep, so that's how you do field. That prints the second field separated by space. If we wanted to print, okay, you can put any character here. How do I do cut to the end of the line? Yeah, okay, you just put two to the end, you put a little dash there, and now we've got all our headers. Cool. T, R, trim, or translate. Translate, it's actually called translate. I always call it trim, but it's translate. It translates characters from one type to another, so lowercase to capitals, but I, I use it to delete things mainly. But let's do an example, meme, right? So I'm gonna TR all the lowercase characters. So I'm gonna translate all the lowercase characters to upper. Look at this intuitive syntax. Wow, meme. That, that's so intuitive, right? <laughs> this is the real use for Tim though. But for translate, not trim. TR dash D for delete, and then what you want to delete. I want to delete all the E's. Mmm. I want to delete all the M's. Right, there we are. Let's just do some other quick random commands. There's a command called Arch, it installs Arch Linux for you. Arch. Ha, no, it doesn't. It tells you your processor architecture. Gotcha. I bet you believe me. <laughs> LS, list files. Who are the four? It also grows with you, So I always do LS Lata, like that. L A H T R. Long or human readable time and sorted reversely. Let's go through that then. ls-l is a long listing. You can see more interesting things. ls-a shows hidden files so I can see my .git and stuff. ls, by the way, dash capital A hides dot and dot dot. Very useful. So if I do that, combine that with l, there we go. Now it's only got relevant things that I want to see. Human readable makes these into human readable sizes as opposed to, well, I mean, they are bytes, but if there was a big file there, you know, it would be in megabytes or ghibli bits or whatever. You get it. Anyway, long all, human readable, time, sort by last edited here, June 15th, August. But but hang on, August, I edited that today with said. 
That makes no sense to me why the newest one is at the top. I always want the newest one to be at the bottom. Imagine if you've got a directory of a thousand files and you want to see it. So you just put R for reverse listing. Reverse sort them by date. Bam. There we are. August. There we are. And that command grows with you, so I've, I've, I always use this, but I've just got an alias to L. So when I type L, that happens, so I can... Alias L, alias HTR. Okay, I don't put all an A in there, but I probably should. Speaking of alias, alias. You can alias commands. So here, I've got in my bash RC, if I grab alias, alias, bash RC. There we go. Another use of grab. These are all my aliases. So you type alias, blah, 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 blah. So if I type weather, it runs this command. Terminal is a bit zoomed in, but it says what my weather is. You can also type the alias command to list your aliases, but I'm not going to do that. Um, uptime. Shows your uptime. Uptime. It's not very long. Uptime-p. You can see exactly how long it is. Well, 243, whatever. Also shows your load average. Who? Shows you who's logged in. Who? It's only me. Who would have thought? If there's someone else logged in, SSH. Mark at localhost. Bruh. Who again? There's two of us because I've just logged in. Okay. I log out, I type who again. There we go. It's only me. Uh, but there is also the W command, which is the first command I run when logging into any server. It's like who, but better. So it shows the users, but it also shows the load average and exactly what they're doing. You can spy on people and you're like, oh, not do, not do. So date gets the date. Who would have thought? But you can also format it. So if I want the year, I can do date plus Y. No, plus percent Y. It gets the year. So I can do percent. So format, this is like format. And then percent Y, capital Y for the long year, Y for short year, Y, percent M for month, 08, or capital M for the... Um, M for month, uh, and then D for day. So that's a good format. Long day, okay, it longs it, whatever. M is normally the super version of the the other one, and then you can do like dash ISO or something. Yeah, to get it in a standard format, there we are. Yeah, you'll see this in log files and stuff, so this is like a, the long date format. This is the proper, this is what a lot of APIs will expect you to send your date formats in and stuff. Uh, anyway, that's some quick little utils. I had COVID, I got it very bad, that's why I've been off, and then I got very lazy and depressed. Um, right, bye. Look, I'm even drinking a smoothie instead of Monster. <laughs> Help. Like, comment, subscribe, please.